Okay, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss, and I wanted to use this video as an announcement that we have fig cuttings for sale. It is that time of the year, guys. It is now the time that we are selling fig cuttings, probably now until sometime into December, maybe January, but I imagine this year it's gonna be rather quick. Um, I want, if you guys are really interested, by the way, in purchasing cuttings from me, please, I, do me a huge favor, please listen to this video in entirety. It would really benefit me uh, because there's always some questions that I get that crop up and they're always the same question. And I wanna be very apparent or transparent, excuse me, with you guys. I wanna talk about the product that I have for sale, what it is that you guys will receive, the handling instructions, so what you guys should do when they come in the mail, um, how to store them, and also even we're gonna talk a little bit about rooting. Before I get into that, I just want to mention, I hope everybody had a really nice Thanksgiving. Um, I know this is a tough time for people. I think uh, it's really important more now than ever to be really appreciative and thankful for what you have, to really value your friendships and your family first. I think this is uh, you know, just absolutely critical for all of our happiness. We need to be spending time with people. We need to be with our family and appreciative. That is extremely important. So this holiday, for those of us in the United States, I think, I hope everyone just had a really great time. Um, so back to the cuttings here. This is what you guys will receive. In the listings, by the way, on FigVid, that's where everything is available. So if you wanna know where all this stuff is, it's in the description. There is a link there down in the, uh, the description of this video to FigVid. Which is, a, which is a storefront of all of the cuttings and all of the plants that I ever have for sale. If you're ever lost, you ever wanna find out where that link is, it's in the description of all of my videos. It's very simple. You sign up there on Figbit if you're new. You put in your address that you want the cuttings to be shipped to. Um, you also have to connect your PayPal account. So hopefully you guys have a PayPal account. That's also really easy to sign up to. Connect your bank account, connect your credit card whatever it is. Again, hopefully you're using an email that you guys check regularly attached to your PayPal account because the tracking information, when you guys actually get these cuttings in the mail, the tracking information will be sent to that PayPal email that you guys use automatically. So I know I get a lot of questions about that. Ross, where's the tracking or where is my package? Well, it's automatically sent to your email guys. So. Here's what you guys will receive, is that we have cuttings this year that are over, most of them, 95% of them, are at least a foot in length or longer. Every single uh, set of cuttings, by the way, will come as a pair of three, or a trio of three, not a pair. I'm not selling cuttings individually. I don't really believe in that. I think you guys, uh, for the most of us, even including myself, we're just not very good at propagating plants. And unless you have a really great green thumb, buying one cutting is just most, in most cases, not a great idea. Even myself, I buy two cuttings at least of every single variety that I wanna grow. And in most cases, actually, I buy, uh, or I should say, in some cases, I even buy more so that I can have multiple trees of it. Maybe I wanna put one of them in the ground, maybe I wanna put one in a container and evaluate them like that. Buying one stick, I think just honestly, in some cases could be a waste of your money. So I would like to offer these cuttings to you guys as in a sense, not necessarily a guarantee, but as close to a guarantee that I can give you that you will successfully obtain this variety. This, that's really what it's all about. People spend hundreds and thousands of dollars. I've done that myself. The first years that I, I started getting into figs, you end up spending a lot of money, unfortunately. And uh, unfortunately, we get trapped in that little trap and, and the cuttings don't end up working out. You know, you're only so good the first couple of years you do this. You know, it's highly advisable that if you guys are just not as skilled as you should be or as you think you might be, that you start out with a lot of cuttings. I mean, this is a lot of wood. This is, you know, easily, Per variety, every single variety, every listing I have will be a minimum of three cuttings that are 95% of them 12 inches or more in length. So if you multiply 12 inches by three, you're looking at 36 inches of wood. And in most cases, all the listings are gonna be 
really all the listings will be 30 to 40, even more than 40 inches of wood, which should be plenty of wood for you guys to be able to obtain this variety, at least bare minimum one tree or one graft. I mean, there's so many nodes, so many, so much wood that this is just my little way I think of, you know, really saying to you guys that I'm offering this product and I'm really hoping that you guys actually obtain the variety. Now, if you wanted, because the cuttings are so long, I mean, you could cut them in half. I don't necessarily recommend that, but you could, you could, if you're really good at this, you could turn three cuttings into six trees. Oddly enough, some people may comment, whether this is publicly, whether this is in this, the comments of this video, that I'm offering a lot of wood this year. But in all honesty, actually, this is a little bit less wood than I've offered in the past. If you guys have had a variety that you received from me that was five cuttings, typically that was more wood than this, actually. But I find that people are very finicky with their cuttings. They, they are very, um, uh, you know, almost like cutting Nazis in a way, in that they really want to have very specific and see very specific things. So I'm trying my best to appease those people. You know, personally, when I first started, I was lucky to get any cuttings. You know, I was lucky to have what I had. I was appreciative. I was happy to even be in the hobby, to be a part of this, to be able to grow figs. I mean, it was just like a gift. But, you know, things have changed. So what we're gonna do, as I said, we're getting the cuttings I have in the listings, by the way, a photo of all of the cuttings or an example of the cuttings that you guys will receive. So I have an example here, let me just show it to you real quick, of two varieties. We have Neruciola de Elba, and we also have Nero 600M here. So I wanna open these up really quickly for you guys and show you the cuttings themselves. And again, if you wanna know what you're gonna receive, it's in the listing. There will be a photo of these cuttings in the listing. So here they are. And every variety, by the way, comes in different shapes and sizes and colors. You know, not every variety is gonna be as thick as you might want. As an example, Neruccio de Elba is in all honesty, one of the thinnest varieties. The wood is very thin because the vigor on the variety, the genetics is very low. It has a very low vigor. So therefore the wood is going to be very thin. And some people want thicker wood some people want thinner wood. You know, it's hard to appease and please everybody. So I'm giving you, in most situations per set, a mix and match of cuttings. We have some that are thin, we have some that are thicker. Again, some that are thinner, some are tip cuttings, some are from lower down on the tree, et cetera, et cetera. It's, and honestly, it's trying to appease as many people as humanly possible. And that's what we're dealing with. Some of these cuttings are a little bit on the greener side, but what I can guarantee you is that they are hardened, right? So this is hard wood, and that's all that really matters. It'd be one thing if this was green and soft, you would not see good success or good storage with something like that. But the fact that this wood is hardened, this is the key. This is critical to actually receiving a quality, high quality product. Now, also, I just clipped these. So these are fresh, and people might comment for whatever reason, and just think, oh, well, these don't look very fresh or they're not, they don't have a ton of moisture in them. Well, how can that be? I just took it off the tree, right? Now, something else that people tend to point out, and this is just, over the years I've noticed this, I've heard comments about this from different people, but you'll see along the, the wood here that it may have even a shriveled-like appearance on some of the branches. This shriveled like appearance, I assure you, does not mean that the cutting is losing moisture. This is what the, mo what the cutting looks like on the tree. <laughs> um, and in fact, I'll even show you guys some examples of trees here where the cuttings on the tree look like that. So it has nothing to do with the fact that they're losing moisture. It has everything to do with, this is just physio physiologically or biologically, what happens to these varieties. You can see these kind of, uh, these little almost like lines along the branches. So this is just normally how the trees look and behave in my climate, in my yard, 
again, there's plenty of moisture and they will succeed for you. <laughs> and the one thing that you really should be concerned with, if you guys were interested in, you know, whether or not a cutting, let's say not just from me, but from somebody else is even alive, do the scratch test. See if, by the way, there is any uh, cambium alive underneath the, uh, the cutting. You very easily scratch some of that bark. Underneath is that layer of living material called the cambium, and that should be bright green. Now, there may be parts of the cutting, by the way, that aren't alive. So if you have a portion below a node or a portion above a node at the top or the bottom of the cutting, well, that's not a great place to do the scratch test because the cutting is naturally going to dry out and reject even, not try to keep that portion of the wood alive. So you're kind of, uh, in a sense, wasting your time at that point. Now, you may also notice, by the way, here's a spot on this particular cutting. This is a kind of a common thing that people just get, again, cutting Nazis. But uh, you have spots on these particular cuttings. If I can really show this to you guys, that would really help. But it's a darker spot right in here. And this darker spot right where my thumb is, I think you guys can see that. Uh, this darker spot is just simply a stain of some of the fig sap. So the, the sap has dried on the wood this has nothing to do with mold or any other problem. What I'm gonna suggest that you guys do, if, again, if you are one of these people who has to have the most perfect looking cuttings rather than the per most perfect rooting cuttings, then what I would suggest is you, actually when you get them in the mail, take them up out of their bags and then you're going to lightly scrub them with, with water. And I mean very lightly scrub them. This will remove a lot of the surface things that are on here. This also may help with scale or overwintering pests. And actually that can be a very good thing. You may be able to also remove some of the Breba figs that you don't want in the rooting process or small figs that may be present along the branches. And it, just in general, clean up the branches and make them look a lot nicer. You know, um, there's not really much else to that, but once you're done, you just let them dry, um, fully dry, but there's no moisture left on the cutting. And then you, I would suggest that you guys label them individually, whatever the variety is. You could use a Sharpie, you could use a paint pen. And then when you're done, you're gonna place that, those cuttings back in the bag that they came in. And then you're gonna zip it up. If you wanna store them properly, you're gonna zip the top, but not all the way. You're gonna leave a little bit of a gap here for some air. Then you're gonna put this in this larger bag, which by the way, I specifically bought for this particular purpose, is you're gonna put that right in here as this is gonna come, by the way, in a packaging just like this. And you're gonna do the same exact thing. You're gonna put the cuttings in the bag and you're gonna zip the top, but not all the way. So there is a little bit of air that can get in and out. We don't wanna suffocate the cuttings. We do not wanna have cuttings 100% trapped in an environment where there is no air. That I believe personally leads to anaerobic conditions. Your cuttings end up rotting. You have problems with your cuttings. So I never in the past have ever fully wrapped my cuttings. I used to send them in bread bags to you guys and I would roll them up. And that I think really did the job really well because that plastic also was kind of breathable and that the plastic would trap the moisture within it wouldn't have so much air that it was drying the cuttings out, but it also wasn't trapping all the air in and preventing uh, or creating, I should say, those anaerobic conditions. So what you really don't wanna do is actually vacuum seal your cuttings. I've had so, such few success from people sending me vacuum seal cuttings or cuttings that have been in a warmer environment. It's really critical. When the cuttings go through the mail in a warmer environment and they're sealed like that, it's kind of just spelling disaster because now you have warmer temperatures and that anaerobic environment is getting worse and worse. You're gonna inevitably see some rot. Once, by the way, so this is kind of what you're gonna receive is that we're gonna be sending them in this bubble mailer. This bag goes right in here. Again, I seal this up just like that. And this goes right in the mail right to you guys. Put the posters right on top. So simple. 
Um, there's not a worry about frost. I know some people are concerned. Every year, it seems like maybe some packages get delayed here and there, and some people will think, well, is it just too cold to ship the cuttings right now, Ross? No, I, very rare situations have I ever noticed that. Some people even put their cuttings in the freezer. Well, that's a horrible idea. And I don't recommend that. That's definitely not something you wanna do. But you, you wanna put them in the fridge, you wanna keep them in the crisper drawer, in that vegetable and fruit drawer with the high humidity. And these can store in this particular way here without this bag, but this double layer of plastic for up to a year. I've seen it numerous years here from my own cuttings, from other people's cuttings, storing them this way. But it's absolutely critical that you take the steps that I mentioned. So that's what you guys are gonna receive. That's the product. That's the handling instructions. That's how to store them. Um, and then the last thing here is just some little tips that I wanna give you guys on rooting. Um, there's a few mistakes that people make and I think it's so easy to avoid, but yet people repeat them over and over and over again. And you guys listen to people who honestly, I really just don't believe know what they're talking about and shouldn't be giving information out um, on rooting anything. Uh, so one of the big pitfalls people run into with these cuttings is actually using a humidity dome. You don't need a humidity dome. You can use a humidity dome, but as soon as the cuttings start to leaf out, you don't want that humidity dome, right? Humidity domes really are meant for, or misting systems are really meant for green cuttings, cuttings with leaves on them, uh, that you really need to keep the humidity extremely high to make sure that the cutting is gonna survive. These are hardwood uh, brown cuttings. So what you wanna do is just wrap them with parafilm. Let them leaf out. When they leaf out, they're gonna be in the humidity of the environment that you're rooting in, and you're not gonna need a humidity bin or humidity dome. So you just completely eliminate an entire step. Rooting and being successful and really gaming a system, being very uh, you know, meticulous about, let's say, rooting, whether it's maybe a particular shot in tennis, maybe it's you know, shooting a three-pointer, you know, whatever it is, in some kind of skill that we are gonna do as humans, we need to simplify that. If you're gonna complicate things and add all these extra motions, all these extra steps, you're then creating a chance for more things to go wrong. So eliminating a humidity dome, just by buying some parafilm or buddy tape, it's well worth the investment. You need parafilm. You're gonna be an orchardist, you're gonna have trees, you're gonna do some grafting, there's so many applications for parafilm, it's sickening. You need to have that. Please invest in parafilm. Um, the other thing I'd really recommend that you avoid is do not up-pot your cuttings. So for me, I like to put them directly in these one gallon size pots or something reasonably sized. You know, if you have those small cups that people like to put them in, it's just not enough soil. It's just not enough root mass for that tree to really get established, I think, to a point where you can comfortably take it up out of that cup and then put it into something like this. I think you need something a little bit larger or really just more material. Um, it's really up to you, but again, this is an unnecessary step. When these cuttings are small and really you know, easily killed at this small, young state, you don't wanna mess with them. You don't wanna disturb them. You wanna keep them where they're at and preferably they're in this one gallon size for a couple months, you bring them outside, adjust them to your sunlight and you're done. Then you just take this pot as I've done for many, many years and I then put them into this, this five gallon size. And then I'm done. I don't have to worry about the tree ever again. It just needs to fully root itself out or root itself out really well in that one gallon size. What's the problem? Now, you could also, and this is something I can recommend, is doing some pre-rooting. Now, people just don't understand that the cuttings need to callus, okay? So these bottom ends and these cuts that you guys make, and maybe even when you score the bottom of the bark, that location of where you made those cuts needs to callus. If it doesn't callus, you will not form the roots. So potentially, you're gonna have these sticks sitting in your pots with the right level of moisture, you know, in a, in a warm environment, and they're gonna sit there for a couple weeks not doing anything. And you're gonna sit there and think to yourself, what's happening? Why aren't they rooting? Why aren't they leafing out? 
Well, that process just has to happen. So you can pre-root them. You guys can actually, and I would recommend this for the thicker cuttings, cuttings that are probably, I would say about this thickness here, which is maybe about a half an inch in thickness or larger, I would take them separately, wrap them with some moist. Moist is the key. Moist sphagnum moss or a moist paper towel right around the bottom of the cutting. Place this then into a plastic bag, put that into a warm environment, and over time you will start to see the root initials form all along this cutting. At that moment, place that then into the container here that I've mentioned, or the container that you're gonna use with the moist soil, and you will see success. It's better, I think, to do that with thicker cuttings rather than thinner cuttings. In fact, I'd probably avoid it with thinner cuttings because we're just trying to get a surface area coverage of moist of moisture, really. That's all it is. That moisture is going to progress this problem or this uh, problem, progress this um, process along. So we really need to focus on the moisture first and foremost. If you do all these other steps, really the only thing you have to worry about is the moisture. Controlling that moisture. You don't want it too wet and you don't want it too dry. Some are right in that middle. When you squeeze the medium, just a couple drops or maybe even a drop of water comes out. That's the perfect moisture. That's really the hardest part about growing these cuttings. Even for myself, you know, you could just stick them right in the ground. I mean, we don't even have to really complicate this. Wait until the spring, stick the cuttings right in the ground. You're going to see success, especially with these longer cuttings here that have more energy in them. And if you don't cut them, it's way better off that way for just sticking them right in the ground. Um, I've seen fantastic success that way. It's kind of crazy. Um, so those are the, the main pitfalls, I think. I would also invest in some really good lighting. If you're doing this inside, you're trying to set up a grow environment. You know, worry about the soil moisture. Don't up-pot them. You can pre-root some of the cuttings. Um, and uh, what was the other thing we mentioned? Use parafilm, guys. Try to avoid the humidity domes as much as you can. Simplify this whole process as best as you can. Um, and you're gonna see success. I mean, these are very viable cuttings. For anyone to disagree is just a hater at this point. And um, this really, I think, is not even really the, I would say it is up there. It probably is the highest quality cuttings, but it's not even actually the most amount of wood that I've sent. So you guys are really in for a treat this year, I think. Um, the prices are listed there on FigBid if anyone's interested. Most of this is going to be for buy it now prices. I'm not even going to really bother with auctions this year. I kind of want to get all this listed, sold, and out to you guys as quickly as possible so I can kind of move on with my life. I got a very busy December. Did pass the CPA exam for anyone interested. I'm officially a CPA. That's awesome. Um, so I have a lot more time, but I would like to get on to actually tax season, getting that whole thing straightened out. And then we can be out here again in May and uh, hopefully be on our own farm and uh, starting our growing season. So that is the, uh, the video here, guys. I hope you guys had a great holiday. I thank everyone for the support. I thank everybody again for all of the uh, trees that they bought, for the cuttings they're going to buy. It's such a great thing to have you guys have such a community like this, people who are willing to support me. I will see everybody soon for the next video. Please check out the listings and we'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.